Women have been making history ever since Eve was blamed for taking a bite out of the apple. But it wasn't until 1981 that the USA decided to highlight women's accomplishments, their achievements, their strength, their courage, highlight that all and made Women's History Month. To wrap up Women's History Month, I thought I'd do a series of videos about the early women writers, the pioneering women who paved the way for the rest of us. That's my hint to you that if you'd like to watch these future videos as well as videos about Harley Davidson News and tips and tricks about motorcycling in general, you might want to go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. While it is true that women have come a long way, we still have a long way to go. I'm talking about freedom from violence, equal pay for equal work, control over our own reproductive rights, and the right to education to name just a few. And while it's true that as an American woman, I do enjoy a lot of freedoms. I ride my motorcycle that I own where I want, whenever I want, and I don't have to answer to anybody. However, I really don't see a woman in Afghanistan being able to do the same thing. So there are obviously some countries out there that still need to catch up. And you might think that women's rights are only being trampled in third world countries or have been relegated to the early part of the 20th century. You'll soon find out if you do any sort of digging like I did when I was researching this video that there are still laws on the books today that trampled women's rights. However, women who ride today and how we are treated is a topic for another video. And that's for two reasons. For number one, Today's video is all about honoring those pioneering women who paved the way for the rest of us. And two, there's a lot of recent experiences to go over so that the women who ride, who come after me, will know what to look for. Originally, I was gonna lump all of these women together into one video, but I quickly realized, again, while doing the research for this video, that if I did that, I was going to cut out a lot of the history and I didn't want to do that again to them. Some of these women you might have heard of already, some of them might be new to you, and if I am missing one of your favorite early women pioneering writers, please let me know in the comments below. How did you find out about her and was she one of the people who has inspired you in your own life? This video today will be about the earliest woman rider that I have heard of who has traversed across the country on a motorcycle. And her name is Della Crew. The others that I'll cover in the following months are Avis and Effie Hotchkiss, Adeline and Augusta Van Buren, Vivian Bales, Bessie Stringfield, Linda DeGau and Dot Robinson, and Beryl Swain. And again, if your favorite isn't here, let me know in the comments below. But for now, please allow me to share with you what I've learned about the most delightful Della. With a good number of miles already under her belt, she'd been to Alaska and most of North America. Della Crew was no stranger when it came to traveling. This was the early 1900s when any sort of serious venture was done by train because roads weren't direct, weren't very well marked, if at all, and weren't even paved. Looking into possibly doing a new adventure all the way around the world, Deli came to the realization that the train was just too expensive as well as way too boring. That's when either it was her nephew or her cousin suggested that she look into doing it by motorcycle. The year was 1913 and she was living in Waco working as a manicurist when she bought a Harley Davidson single cylinder and, as far as I know, taught herself to ride. It seemed that the riding bug had bitten her and the spirit of adventure was just too irresistible. Della was soon consumed with an infatuation and the true freedom that only a motorcycle can bring. That led the then 29 year old to imagine an adventure that would take everything she was made of to complete, but on the flip side also offered her a 
great amount of unfiltered freedom. The following spring had seen a lot of rain in the area and feeling that it would be more stable and easier to ride, Della traded in her single for a Harley Davidson V-Twin with a sidecar. Once she loaded it with supplies, she was going to be headed to New York City by way of Milwaukee, which was roughly 5,000 miles. The good people of Waco also gave Della a Boston Bull Pup, which she named Trouble. She famously declared that Trouble is the only trouble I will have with me on the trip, if only. Even though some suggested that she should ship the bike outside of the area to get an easier start, Della insisted on leaving Waco, stating that she wanted every mile to be a Harley Davidson mile. Her and Trouble began their adventure on June 24th, 1914. Remember, it was rare to see a woman outside of her house unaccompanied, let alone riding a motorcycle. Della's first stop was to be in Dodge City, Kansas, which, thanks to modern roads and machines, today is about an eight and a half hour trip. Back then, it took Della and Trouble all of eight days to go the 540 miles. Despite a collision with a stump which knocked her sidecar out of line, Della made it to the paved streets of Oklahoma City without a major mishap. The 75 miles of actual paved roads in the city were a welcome relief. But when she got to Kansas, heavy rains made the roads such a mess she had to put on tire chains. Finally, even chains couldn't provide enough traction and, with trouble in the sidecar, Della decided to go off-road and went through four miles of Kansas wheat fields before finding a usable road. She made it to Dodge City in time for the race, one of the premier motorcycle events in the area at the time. The affair was dominated by the newly minted Harley-Davidson racing team, soon to be known as the Wrecking Crew. I'm sure there was some sort of camaraderie between the racers and Della, which might have helped bolster her excitement and confidence in her own abilities with her machine. The races at Dodge City also came with tremendous press, photographs, and attention for crew that quickly established her in the media. She became a darling of local and national journalists who were eager to keep track of the pioneer female enthusiast. It might even have been there that Miss Crew made the acquaintance of some very important men in the motorcycling world at the time, the founders of Harley-Davidson. The story goes that they invited her to the new headquarters in Milwaukee. In any event, they were undoubtedly great friends to have on such an arduous journey. Next, Della and Trouble headed to St. Louis, Missouri. That was for the Federation of American Motorcyclists annual convention in mid-July that year. Finally, some good weather and roads. The pair made good time. She paid 15 cents for a ferry ride across the Mississippi River and continued north to Chicago, where she visited with C.H. Lang, owner of Harley-Davidson's first dealership. After that, she continued north to Milwaukee, where she met up with William and Walter Davidson, seen here in this photograph. And accounts have it that she was treated to a picnic. Notice her bike now says around the world instead of Harley Davidson on the gas tank. Pictured here in front of the state-of-the-art six-floor brick building that had only been completed the year before, and already churning out about 13,000 motorcycles a year. Della and Trouble then spent some time with family still in the Racine area before getting back on the road. First south and then east, the pair were stopped twice while Indiana. There was a bad case of hoof and mouth disease with livestock, and Della had to promise the authorities that Trouble would stay in the sidecar so as not to transmit the disease. Unfortunately, the weather was again going to take a turn for the worse. Winter showed up early, as it tends to do up here in the North Country, with bitter cold and snow in November. That forced a three-day layover in Toledo, Ohio, and the ride around the southern edge of Lake Erie turned into a snowy one as they approached Cleveland. The wind and drifting snow sent the motorcycle into ditches several times, forcing Della and Trouble to seek shelter at a farmhouse. The farmer refused her request at first, saying that she didn't belong on the road in that kind of severe weather. 
Fortunately, the farmer's wife had some common sense and a kind heart, so the pair soon found themselves next to a roaring fire. On Thanksgiving Day, Della and Trouble were back out on the road again. Thawing snow made the road so bad it took them two hours to travel two and a half miles to the nearest town. More than once she needed the help of local farm boys to free the motorcycle and get it rolling again. Crossing the corner of Pennsylvania, the pair finally made it to New York State. Except for, once again, as they approached Buffalo, they had to struggle through nine miles of roads that offered sticky clay which clung to everything and clogged the wheels. Physically spent, Della hired a farmer and his horse to pull them the last mile. Thankfully, the rest of the ride across the state was relatively easy when it came to road conditions. However, bitter cold and heavy snow returned once again to haunt them. Next, her story has Della going around the Catskills by going through the Mohawk Pass, which is literally in my side yard, so to speak then to Albany, then south to New York City. The minus 10 degree weather continued to plague her, and so she was probably wearing just about everything that she owned when she rolled into the city, which was four pairs of jackets, four pairs of stockings, and a pair of sheepskin shoes. Not to mention, Trouble had his own custom-made sweater and was bundled up in it. Upon her arrival in the Big Apple in December 1914, Della is quoted as saying, I had a glorious trip, I am in perfect health, and my desire is stronger than ever to keep going. Della, Trouble, and her trusty Harley Davidson had covered 5,378 miles across 10 states in six months, and her journey was far from over. After that, the pair headed south, in part, I suspect, to get warm, but also because, at the time, the First World War was raging on, and Della could not get a ship to Europe to start her around-the-world adventure. So instead, she hopped a ship and headed south to Florida. From Jacksonville, Della still headed even further south battling shin-deep sands for hundreds of miles until she ultimately had to board a train to Key West. There she recalled that the beautiful blue key seemed to teem with sponges and cigars and that, oh, if I were a man, I'd have bought some cigars, sat down in a cozy hotel chair, and reviewed in the puffs of curling smoke my glorious motorcycle trip, which I had so happily ended in Key West. But still, she continued her journey. From there, she went over to Havana, Cuba, where she met with other local riders and toured all over the island. And after that, it was another boat ride, this time to Panama to visit America's masterwork, the recently opened Panama Canal. Della next landed on the tropical paradise island of Jamaica, part of the British Empire at the time, where she motored to the top of the highest peak. Della's last stop on her Caribbean tour was an extended stay in Puerto Rico, where she again motored to all the big sites and to the top of the tallest peaks. Finding herself back in Florida, she once again headed north, stopping in Atlanta. That was September of 1915. You can see that her sidecar is adorned with the names of towns and states which she had visited the year before, as well as the plates, plaques, and badges from her recent international trips. After that, she continued up the coast through the Carolinas and Washington, D.C., and back to the Big Apple once again, racking up nearly 11,000 miles. One story has Della leaving New York City headed to California by way of Alaska, but if she made the trip, there was no press coverage of it this time. The 1920 census, as well as voter registration, she voted in California, confirms that she made it, showing Della as living and working in Compton, California, working as a manicurist and shop clerk. Della didn't accomplish her amazing adventure by focusing on completing the trip or seeking fame. She made a point out of wandering freely wherever she wished, stopping along the way to meet new people, share stories with the locals, and even join in small town parades when the occasion permitted. Talk about freedom. She was an ambassador for two-wheeled freedom, not because of ambition to be a celebrity, 
but because of her overriding passion for freedom and her undeniable spirit of adventure. Sad to say that after 1926, we lose track of her travels until our understanding of her later in life ultimately becomes a mystery. I'd like to think that Della struck off on a great adventure, maybe to the Philippines or even China, with trouble by her side. It is odd that such an accomplished and unique young woman would have fallen into obscurity so quickly. Though, as in anything related to the life of Della Cruz, she most certainly was the one who was calling the shots and may have found it best not to be so caught up in the spotlight. Hopefully in the future we'll uncover some more information and we can find out what other adventures that she had. But until then, Miss Della Cruz will remain one of the most cherished pioneering women of American motorcycle culture.